So glad to be here this morning and excited to be here. I hope you're excited. I think sometimes it's easy to get in the rut. Well, this is just what we do on Sunday morning. But let's get excited about the Lord and let's get excited about this season. Uh, it is about Jesus. Uh, Jesus is the reason for Christmas. Jesus is the reason for Easter. And uh, we're certainly glad to be here this morning. Uh, Luke chapter 19, if you have your, your Bibles with you. And um, it has been an interesting week uh, filled with all kinds of ups and downs for me. And uh, we've had all kinds of things happen uh, out here in construction this week, all the way up to a, a gas line ripping apart. And uh, so uh, when you're sitting in the office and a guy comes storming in the office, hey, shut it off, shut it off. I'm thinking something's going on. Have we lost half of our church? And, uh, but yeah, he, uh, he ruptured a gas line. And, and so it's been pretty eventful this week. And uh, left and right, I do, do appreciate uh, Brother Bobby being here uh, Wednesday night for me. Uh, I, I have made the promise you will not find me out of this pulpit anytime soon. I'm here to stay, and uh, so I just wanted to let everybody know I, I do appreciate him in his absence being here. I'm told the service was wonderful. Uh, Luke chapter 19 tonight, Luke chapter 19 in verse 29. Uh, of course, this is Palm Sunday, and uh, Palm Sunday is the day that we uh, understand, and most uh, historians and scholars say that uh, this was the day that Jesus rode out upon uh, a young donkey unto the city and was welcomed as a king, as the king that he truly was. And uh, we understand that this is the week, the Passion Week, as we get forward to Good Friday and remember what Jesus did on the cross. And we'll be talking more about that next week. And uh, we'll be talking about the cross and sunrise service. And we'll be talking about the resurrection in our Sunday morning service next week. And uh, so we're looking forward to a great uh, worship service next week. But today I hope you've come with your cups up, ready to get what God wants you to get today. Uh, Luke chapter 19, we're going to look at verses 29 there. and You can find this account uh, also in the uh, Gospel of Matthew and Mark as well. And so I've kind of pulled a little bit from all of those accounts. But we're going to look today uh, here in Luke chapter 19 and verse 29. The Bible says, and, and it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied, and what well, was a young donkey, uh, wherein yet a never a man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, Why do ye loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way, and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the colt, and the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they, caught, they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And, and when the, he was come nigh, even uh, now to the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for the mighty works they had, had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees and among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. I love this verse. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if, there, uh, should hold, if they, these should hold their peace, these stones, the stones would immediately cry out. I want you to know something this morning. God's going to get his glory one way or another. Right. Verse 41. And when he was come near, and he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least in the day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. Let us pray. Father, we're thankful today for your word. We're thankful, Lord, that we can be here today, Lord, and, and learn more about you. And Lord, I pray, Father, that we would rejoice in who you are today. We see here the triumphal entry. We see, Lord, you being worshipped as you truly deserve to be worshipped as you walk this earth. And Lord, help us to understand exactly what Palm Sunday teaches us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you know anything about the New Testament, this was not a familiar uh, story to us who follow the life of Jesus. Jesus walked this earth and many times He 
was filled with troubles from the scribes and Pharisees who hated him and wanted nothing more than to put him to death. Of course, we understand that through Jesus' ministry there were times where people would follow him, but then there was a time in his ministry where the people quit following him because he wouldn't give them what they wanted. He was trying to show them the way of everlasting life. And as he began to, this ministry, uh, we see the ups and downs of Jesus' ministry. But here on Palm Sunday, here on this certain day, Jesus walks in, rides in to this city once again. He rides into Jerusalem and we see the crowds and multitudes shouting Hosanna, praise to the King. He was being worshipped as the King He was the whole time as He walked this earth. And I, I began to look at this passage of Scripture and I wanted to know what does this passage, what does Palm Sunday teach me about my God? What does Palm Sunday teach you and I about Jesus and I began to go down the line and look at the passage, and I, I really hope it will speak to your heart today. What does Palm Sunday teach us about our Savior? What does it teach us about Jesus? Number one, that Jesus is Creator. It shows us here that Jesus is Creator. Jesus here is getting ready. He's been foretelling His death. He has been telling everyone about uh, the day He would come and He would die and He would rise again and telling them about the way of everlasting life. And He tells them that I and my Father are one. He says that He is God. Say amen if you believe Jesus is God this morning. Jesus is the God-man. I know there's some people, some beliefs, some uh, religions that teach that Jesus was nothing more than a man. I want you to know if Jesus was just a man, we are all still in our sins. But I'm glad to know today that Jesus was not just a, a man. He was not just a carpenter. He was not just an ordinary guy. Or he wasn't just a great teacher. I've known some great teachers in my lifetime. But Jesus was far more than a great teacher. He was God Almighty. He was the creator of the universe. Now think of that for a minute. Jesus walking this earth. And these individuals that had the privilege to meet Jesus and talk with Jesus and walk with Jesus and see Him heal the lame and heal the sick, they were able to behold the Creator of the universe. That's amazing. Now wait a minute. If you're saved in here, you're going to be able to do the same thing. There's going to come a day when I stare Jesus in the face and I'll be able to behold the Creator face to face today. That's where we're headed today. But the Palm Sunday, it teaches us first of all that Jesus is Creator. Look there in verse 30 of chapter 19. The Bible says, he, Jesus says, saying, Go ye in the village over against you, in the which that you're entering, ye shall find a colt tied. And you begin to do a cross study of all the Gospels, you understand that it was a young donkey. It was a, a, a colt, a, a young baby donkey that Jesus used to ride in uh, into the city. Now, you say, Preacher, where does this fit in? You see... The amazing thing about this is, and two of the three Gospels record us, why in the world does the Bible inform us that this colt has never been ridden? I mean, I think that that's some significance there. It tells us, first off, that this colt had never been ridden. And if you know anything about donkeys, my dad, I worked on a farm growing up, and he said they used to have a few of those. And my dad would always say that they were some of the most stubborn animals you will ever find on this side of the planet. Now, and, and I, I've got a message tonight on this donkey. You won't believe it, but I've been taken to school this week about this donkey. And I'm going to share with you tonight in Sunday night's message about this donkey that really turned my world upside down this week. And I hope you come and, and, and hear about the donkey. But there's something about this donkey this morning that I want to share with you. I did some research about breaking donkeys. I couldn't find hardly anything on colts, young donkeys. I couldn't find anything. Uh, everything that, that is online is geared to older, more mature donkeys. But here's what it takes just for the mature ones. The, 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 the trainer said donkeys are some of the most stubborn animals you will find. Especially a young one. Now... This is the step. There was a five-step process. Step one, familiarize the donkey with your and, your and his environment. It is necessary to establish a trust with the donkey to get him to cooperate. Obviously, it takes time to train 
a donkey. Step two, use your voice as the first tool of training to start with the small commands for following you, backing up, slowing down, lifting your feet for the uh, inspect. Make your commands clear and consistent. Donkey, listen to this, donkeys are slow learners and they can get confused and startled by anything new. Repetition is key. Step three, combine the voice commands with treats like carrots and apples during the initial training phase. Step four, introduce the halter to the donkey by rubbing his back. And you're having to do all these things just to break a donkey in order to ride it. Step six, or step five, lead the donkey by pulling the rope gently with the voice commands. If she does not move, pull her on her side in a circle. Step six, Train the donkey to lift his legs for hoof inspection by getting him comfortable with grooming. and So all these things go into them. And and it says at the end, repeat all commands and training without uh, without overworking for the donkey to get comfortable in following them. Now, if you're not experienced in training, you may want to bring in a trainer to help you and put you on the right track. That's what the donkey trainer said. Now, how many of you agree with me that Jesus didn't have to do that. Why? I just put it in our vernacular. That donkey knew who was boss. That donkey realized who was riding him. You say, preacher, that's just an animal. The Bible tells us that all creation worships God. That all creation rejoices in God. That is his creation. How could Jesus ride a donkey, a young donkey at that, that had never been ridden? He just jumps on and he begins to ride into the city. So Jesus is creator. The donkey knew it. The cult knew who he was. The cult recognized who Jesus was. You know, I thought about this and this has kind of formed the basis of my message tonight. But even donkeys know how to serve Jesus. If a donkey can serve Jesus, you and I can serve Jesus. Amen? I'm more stubborn than a donkey. That's my wife. If a donkey can do all that for Jesus, you and I can. Not only did the donkey see it, or the donkey knew it, the crowd saw it. The crowd saw it this morning. Aren't you thankful this morning that when this crowd looked upon this This story, this passage of Scripture that we read this morning, they saw Jesus upon this young colt and He's walking. Could you imagine the fathom? Could you imagine many of them, they're looking at this and they've never seen anything like this before. It's a young donkey. Jesus is Creator this morning. The donkey knew it and the crowd saw it. This morning we know from Palm Sunday that Jesus is the creator of the universe. But then we see nextly that Jesus is king. Palm Sunday, what does it teach us? It teaches us not only that Jesus is creator, but that Jesus this morning is king. Look at this passage of scripture with me. You look there in verse 35 through 38. The Bible tells us that Jesus, they put the, the disciples put their clothes upon the donkey and Jesus got upon the donkey and then the people. And if you, if you look there in the scripture, and I think I, I may have even got it here. Uh, Jesus here is honored as king. Jesus is honored as king. We see it here. We see the very picture of them laying palm leaves upon the ground, laying their own garments upon the ground as Jesus made His way through the city. All those things speak to the fact that they realized that Jesus was King. I want you to understand this morning, Jesus is King. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Mark chapter 11 and verses 8 through 9. The Bible tells us, And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off of the trees and strawed them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We see that he is not only honored as king, but we see that he is praised as king. He's praised as king. What does Palm Sunday teach us? It teaches we ought to have a little praise for our king this morning. We ought to be praising him for being who he is in the seat that he sits upon this morning, the throne of the universe. Are you praising the king this morning? 
Are you honoring the king this morning? But then we see that he's followed as king. Mark chapter 11 verse 9 that we just read. The word followed means to side with. It means to side with. It means to be on their team. The Bible tells us they followed Jesus as a king. I want to ask you a question. In your life, do you honor, do you praise, and do you follow the king? This morning, your life bears out who is king. You have a king. And you can tell by the way you worship the king this morning. They knew who he was. They knew he was king. This day, Jesus marched in like the king he always was. I think this morning in our lifestyles, we would have to admit sometimes we live the way that tells people around us that we don't believe Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. If Jesus is king this morning, we're going to serve Him. If Jesus is king this morning, we're going to obey Him. If Jesus is king this morning, we're going to act like it. Notice the crowd. They were laying their pure clothes out on the floor, out on the road. As Jesus, they were cutting down limb, palm limbs and laying it at His feet. They were acting like Jesus was their king. And this morning it would do us all good to act and live like Jesus really is our king. Jesus is creator. Jesus is king But we also see in this passage in verse 38, if you'll look there in verse 38, the Bible tells us, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. What's so significant about that? Uh, Number three, what does Palm Sunday teach you and I? It teaches us that Jesus is Savior. Jesus is Savior Matthew 21 of the same account in the Gospels in verse 9. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried saying, Hosanna the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When you begin to understand the meaning of Hosanna and you really begin to understand what was taking place here. They claimed Jesus as Savior. They recognized Him not only as Creator. They recognized Him not only as King but they recognized Him as the coming one the son of David the one who would come of the line of David and redeem God's people from this world he would go and pay the price they recognized him that day as the triumphant king yes but also as the triumphant savior I want you to understand something this morning Jesus is savior he's the only savior the word Hosanna I was talking to one of the teenagers for a church and I asked them that they knew what the word Hosanna meant. Anybody know what the word Hosanna means? When they were shouting Hosanna, it was a Hebrew term that means, Lord, save us now. They recognized that Jesus was the Savior. Lord, save us now. They claimed Him as Savior this morning. So we see the crowd claiming Him as Savior, but then we see this morning... That the Word affirmed Him as Savior. You say, what is this? This passage, many people say Jesus did this to go ahead and accept this praise. And many people say this was kind of a lightning rod to spur on the crucifixion of Christ. And it probably was. We see the Pharisees and the scribes getting upset in this passage, telling Jesus to calm these people down. But the main purpose of this passage of Scripture, believe it or not, was to fulfill Scripture. The Bible says in Zechariah 9.9, To rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon a donkey and upon a colt, the foal of a donkey. Notice what the Bible says here in Zechariah. It prophesied that one day Israel's Savior, your Savior, my Savior, would ride into Jerusalem upon a young donkey. If anybody knew Scripture and they saw that, they would understand that Jesus was Savior. The Bible says He would enter having salvation. I'm so glad tonight this morning to know that Jesus is my Savior. I'm so glad tonight that this King, this one that Easter is all about, 
this morning. He is my Savior and He can be your Savior this morning. He came to save. The Bible says He came to seek and to save that which is lost. I want you to know this morning, if you're sitting in this crowd and you don't know for sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior, you don't know. Maybe you're here today and you're gambling with your soul and you say, Preacher, i got plenty of time. I can walk out this door and I'll give up my life over to Jesus when I get a little older and get a little things accomplished in my life. I want you to understand something this morning. Jesus' hands are open. He is ready to save because He is the one only true Savior of this universe. He's here this morning and He desires to seek and to save. He's seeking you out this morning. He desires you this morning. He's the Savior. Hosanna! Hosanna to God in the highest. Lord, save us now. Their plea was the Lord. Save them now. And that should be your plea today. Lord, save me now. Set me free from the bondage of sin. This morning I am so glad that Jesus is Savior. This morning I was going over Easter and I really try to really ask God to give me stuff that that just will will speak to His people. Easter's it's a big deal to to people like me because people come to church on Easter when no, no, no other time of the year they will come. So many times it's the only opportunity a year as a pastor I have an opportunity to influence people who are not under the preaching of God's Word. And so that's important. And I began to just really just understand about salvation even deeper. I've been saved for 20 years and I'm, I'm still, Jesus is still taking me to school. And I'm so glad that He's my Savior not just then, He's my Savior now. And yesterday we had an opportunity to lead a heat and air guy, to the Lord. Out in the parking lot of our church. It wasn't in the altar. It wasn't in the church. It was next to two German shepherds in the middle of, of construction center. People driving through our parking lot up and down. Began to talk to this boy. I've been, been having a relationship with him, just befriending him, letting him know I love him and Begin to share with him. I said, do you know Jesus as your Savior? Do you have a relationship with him? And he said, well, I've been wanting to get baptized. And, you know, I've been, me and my wife have been thinking about getting back in church. And they're a young family. He said, he's getting ready to start a family. And I said, well, I said, you know, I'd love to do that for you. But do you know Jesus personally as your Savior? He looked at me. He said, mm, no, I don't. I said, does that concern you? He said, yeah, it does. I said, can I show you? He stood there and I gave him a mug and an invite to Easter service. He's sitting there shaking. He just stood there and he said, just for a minute, he paused. He said, yeah, I'd like to know. And I was able to share how Jesus bled and died and rose again on the third day. They were to show him that there was a God who loved him. There was a Savior that saved him if he'll have the everlasting gift. I'm so glad today that Palm Sunday teaches us that Jesus is Savior. He'll save you now. You don't have to be here. You can be in the parking lot. You don't have to be here. You can be in the farthest corner of this earth and receive Christ as your Savior. But the important thing is that you receive Him now. The Bible says, Behold, now is the accepted time. This is the day of salvation. You don't know about tomorrow. You don't know about the next week. You don't know about next month. You don't know about when you're 50 or 70, 60, 80 years old. But you know about now. Jesus Christ is calling out to you. He says it's time to get saved. Now is your time. He's calling your number this morning. And the best thing you can do on Palm Sunday when Jesus marches in Jerusalem like the King He is and the Savior Savior he is, is to come and bow down to an old-fashioned altar and receive him as your Savior. Ask Jesus to forgive you. The Bible says he'll no wise cast us aside. His arm's not too short that he cannot save. This morning, finally, we see Jesus is creator, Jesus is king, and Jesus is Savior. 
And this kind of goes without saying, but we see it in the passage anyway. Jesus is God. Oh, I'm so glad this morning that Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Verse 39. Notice there. And they which went before rebuked him and said, He should hold his peace. They should hold their peace. But he cried so much more. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong verse. I'm sorry. 19. 1939. The Bible says, they, were, they asked Jesus to rebuke. Look at verse 40. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. What was going on there? What's the significance of that? Jesus was claiming to be God Himself. And Jesus said, if you don't praise me and you don't worship me, I'm telling you, there's no room for being quiet when Jesus is in the house. That's why I believe as a pastor, it's okay to shout and praise the Lord. Amen? Sometimes we act like the funeral home. We ain't the funeral home. This is the house of the living today. He deserves our praise this morning. He deserves our hallelujahs. He deserves our amens. He deserves our hosannas this morning. It's okay to have a little life in church. Can I tell you this ought to be the most lively place in Pitt County? Because Jesus is alive this morning. I want you to understand this morning. Jesus said if you're quiet, creation's going to praise me. Rocks are going to praise me. God's going to get His glory one way or another. He deserves to be praised this morning. He deserves to be worshipped this morning. Even, under, even creation understands His greatness this morning. In conclusion this morning, I want us to understand, we'll see this next week, Jesus is truly lifted to His right place in this passage here on Palm Sunday. However, in just a week, the same crowd that shouted Hosanna will be shouting crucify Him. What a sad testimony we have here in the passage of Scripture. But I, I've never really preached this passage added on to Palm Sunday like I have this Sunday, but I, I saw it as plain as day. I see a truth about Easter that maybe sometimes we have overlooked. I want us to look there in verses 41. Jesus had come triumphantly in the city and we have this account only in Luke. And when Jesus was come near, he beheld the city. And what did Jesus do? He wept over it. Perhaps the greatest truth, the greatest lesson that we learn about Palm Sunday, perhaps the greatest lesson we learn about Easter, what is Easter all about? Boy, Brother Sammy, this really touched my heart. Is that Jesus cares. Jesus cares this morning. Jesus looked upon the city. He knew every last individual in that city personally. Just like He knows you personally. He saw the trouble that they were getting ready to have for rejecting Him. And this was the whole reason He came to set men, women, boys and girls free. Could you imagine Jesus as He stood and He looked upon the people? And often in Scripture, Jesus stands and He looks. The Bible says in one area in Matthew 9 that Jesus looked upon the multitude and He was moved with compassion. I want you to understand this morning the greatest truth, one of the greatest truths of Easter. Yes, Jesus arose. But what was the crucifixion? What was the resurrection all about this morning? It was about a God who loved you and I enough to send His Son and His Son who came and blessed and died. He left His glory behind. He left uh, the majesty behind to walk the dirt paths of Jerusalem, of, of all the towns that He walked. He walked all they didn't have a place to lay His head. He did all those things. And then He come to a cross and He bled and He died for your sin and for my sin, for something that I did. He was innocent this morning. He bled and died for six gruesome hours upon that cross. And then He was buried and He rose again this morning. What What's the big deal this morning? What does that tell us? Jesus cares. There's a lot of people who could care less about Henry Parker. But you know what? Jesus cares. And that makes it all right. The Bible tells us He longs for our salvation. He longs for a relationship with you this morning. 
He's calling your name this morning. He's speaking to your heart. He's knocking on your heart's door this morning. Do you love Him because He loves you? Do you serve Him because He served you? I just don't understand why faithfulness and all these... And, 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 and being there for Jesus goes out the window when Jesus was faithful and He served us. What if Jesus served us the way we serve Him? How would that be? Wouldn't be good at all, would it? I'm thankful to know that in your situation today, Jesus cares about you. He loves you today. Would you give your heart and life to Him? Christian, would you surrender your all to Him? He cares with every head bowed and every eye closed.